marriage, and home ownership. Two peas in a pod, right? Not in Japan. Now, before you start imagining Godzilla-sized mortgages, let's debunk this stereotype. You see, in the land of the rising sun, tying the knot doesn't always mean snagging a keychain with house keys. Yes, you heard it right. The Japanese have a different take on this whole marriage home ownership equation. It's like sushi and wasabi. You can have one without the other, and it's still perfectly okay. Now, this might come as a surprise to many, considering how we've been conditioned to believe that marriage and buying a house are inseparable milestones. But in Japan, things are a bit different. So, grab your virtual passports and buckle up as we dive into the reasons why owning a home is not a prerequisite for marriage in Japan. Get ready for an exciting journey that promises to shatter some long-held assumptions. First off, let's talk money. Property prices in Japan are sky high, especially in the big cities. Tokyo and Osaka, for instance, are among the most expensive places to live on the planet. Imagine shelling out your hard-earned yen for a tiny apartment that costs as much as a mansion elsewhere. Now that's a tough pill to swallow, isn't it? This financial burden can be substantial, and many couples are choosing to sidestep it entirely. Instead of purchasing a home, they're opting to rent. Renting offers a more affordable and flexible option, and it means you're not sinking your savings into a property that might not appreciate in value. After all, who wants to be tied down to a mortgage that feels more like a millstone around your neck than a stepping stone to the future? But it's not just about the money, it's also about practicality. In a world where change is the only constant, flexibility is key. Renting allows you to move for a job, travel, or simply change your surroundings if you feel like it. It's about having the freedom to make choices that suit your lifestyle and your dreams, not feeling boxed in by a hefty home loan. And let's not forget the societal shift. The idea of owning a home before marriage is a relic from a bygone era. Today's generation is more focused on experiences than possessions. They value the here and now, not some distant future tied up in bricks and mortar. So, economically speaking, buying a house before you tie the knot just doesn't make as much sense. It's more about living life on your own terms, with the flexibility to adapt and change as you go along. After all, isn't life too short to be burdened with unnecessary debt? So folks, the next time someone tells you that you need to buy a house before you get married, you know what to tell them. Life's not a race to the finish line. It's a journey, and it's up to you to decide how you want to travel. Next up, let's talk about changing gender roles. Yes, they're changing everywhere, but especially in Japan. In the past, the traditional Japanese marriage was built around a rigid structure. The man worked, the woman stayed at home, and together they owned a house. But today, that's not a given. As women pursue careers and higher education in increasing numbers, the dynamics of relationships and marriage expectations are shifting. Here's the thing. Women in Japan are no longer just homemakers. They're CEOs, doctors, professors, artists, engineers, and so much more. They're making their mark in every field. And with this rise in career-focused women, the notion of rushing into home ownership before marriage is becoming less and less prevalent. Not to mention, these career-focused women are also contributing to the economy. They're earning well, and they're independent. They can afford to rent their own apartments, and they're not waiting around for a husband to buy them a house. This independence is reshaping the traditional norms of marriage and home ownership in Japan. And let's not forget about the men. More and more, they're embracing the idea that their partners can be just as ambitious and career-driven as they are. They're stepping up, sharing household chores, 
and supporting their partner's careers. This shift in gender roles is leading to a more balanced partnership, where both parties contribute equally to the relationship and to the household. So, what about home ownership? Well, with the focus shifting to careers and personal growth, the rush to buy a home before tying the knot is fading. Couples are taking time to establish their careers, save money, and then decide whether owning a home is the right choice for them. And in many cases, they're finding that it's not. In fact, it's becoming more common for couples to rent apartments or even live separately until they're ready to make the big leap into home ownership together. And that's the beauty of these changing gender roles. They're creating a new narrative, one where owning a home isn't a prerequisite for marriage, but a choice that couples can make when they're ready. Who says you need to buy a house to prove you're ready for marriage? Now, let's take a look at Japan's unique housing market. It's a place where the rules of the game are a bit different. Unlike in many Western countries, where buying a house is seen as an investment that grows over the years. In Japan, homes often depreciate in value over time. Yes, you heard that right. Homes depreciate. In many parts of the world, the value of a house usually appreciates over time. The longer you hold onto a property, the more valuable it generally becomes. But in Japan, the opposite is, is true. After about 25 to 30 years, many houses are deemed old and lose a substantial part of their value. Why does this happen, you ask? Well, it's a combination of factors. One of the main ones is the Japanese preference for everything new. This preference extends to homes as well. There's a cultural belief in Japan that the older a house gets, the more it fills with negative energy. So the older the house, the less desirable it becomes. Another factor is Japan's strict building codes, which are constantly updated to withstand earthquakes. This means that older houses may not be up to current standards, making them less appealing to potential buyers. This depreciation of houses can deter the younger generation from seeing home ownership as a necessary investment before marriage. Why sink a huge chunk of your savings into something that's only going to lose value over time? It's like buying a new car. As soon as you drive it off the lot, it starts to depreciate. So instead of viewing a house as an appreciating asset, many young people in Japan see it more as a consumable good. It's something to use and enjoy for a while, but not necessarily something to hold on to forever. This unique perspective on home ownership is a stark contrast to the idea of a home as a long-term investment that's prevalent in many other countries. It's another example of how cultural and economic factors can shape our attitudes and expectations around major life milestones. With homes losing value over time, it's no wonder many young people aren't rushing to buy. Let's not forget about the elephant in the room, Japan's rapidly aging population and declining birth rate. This demographic shift is causing ripples throughout society and traditional milestones such as owning a home before tying the knot are not immune to these changes. You see, in Japan, the proportion of older people is growing at a breakneck pace. This aging population is coupled with a birth rate that has been on a downward trend for decades. It's like a double whammy and it's causing a significant demographic shift. Now, you might be wondering, what does this have to do with buying a house before marriage? Well, the answer is quite a bit. These demographic shifts have led to a cloud of uncertainty that hangs over the younger generation. This uncertainty in turn is causing many young Japanese people to reevaluate their priorities. So instead of focusing on traditional milestones like buying a house, young people are choosing to delay or even opt out of such milestones. They're thinking, 
Why invest in a house now when the future is so uncertain? It's a completely valid question and a clear sign of how societal shifts can impact personal decisions. Moreover, these demographic shifts are also leading to a rethinking of societal norms. The house before marriage rule, which was once seen as a given, is now being questioned. Young Japanese people are increasingly looking at this rule and asking, why should we follow this? This rethinking is not just confined to the younger generation. Even older Japanese people who grew up with the house before marriage rule are beginning to question its relevance. They're seeing their children, grandchildren, and even their peers opting to rent instead of buying a house. And they're starting to understand why. Given these demographic shifts, it's clear that the house before marriage rule is being rethought. The question is no longer when will you buy a house, but do you want to buy a house at all? And this shift, my friends, is a testament to the power of societal change and the resilience of the younger generation. Lastly, let's talk about urban lifestyle and individual preferences. It's no secret that the bright lights and ceaseless energy of city life can be alluring. Many Japanese people, particularly those of the younger generation, are drawn to the conveniences of urban living. This often means embracing smaller living spaces, like apartments close to city centers. And why wouldn't they? Urban life is like a non-stop carousel of opportunities. It's a hotbed for career growth with diverse job options. Not to mention the endless array of entertainment choices, from concerts and art exhibits to bustling markets and world-class cuisine. Plus, there's the social life. With so many people around, you're never far from a friend or an interesting new acquaintance. In the grand scheme of things, these benefits can often outweigh the perceived advantages of owning a home. After all, who needs a sprawling backyard when you've got a park just down the street? Who needs a large kitchen when you're surrounded by a smorgasbord of dining options? But let's not forget about individual preferences. Just like anywhere else in the world, personal choices play a significant role. Some people might just prefer the flexibility of renting, the freedom to pack up and move whenever they want without the ties of a mortgage. Others might not see home ownership as a necessary step in their life journey, let alone a prerequisite for marriage. This shift away from the traditional norm of home ownership before marriage is a reflection of broader trends. Trends that value individualism and personal preference. Trends that recognize that there's no one size fits all answer to life's big decisions. So, whether it's city life or personal choice, owning a home before marriage is definitely not a must. Now that we've looked at all these factors, it's clear that owning a home is not a prerequisite for marriage in Japan. From economic practicality to changing gender roles, unique housing market dynamics to demographic shifts, and the appeal of urban lifestyle, it's evident that cultural and economic realities have reshaped this traditional perception. Individual preferences play a pivotal role too. So, next time someone tells you that you need to buy a house before you get married, tell them to look at Japan.